Well, what the? It is not hard to tell that WWE female superstars are badasses. And he may be thinking about this as Rhea Ripley. But even badasses have embarrassing moments. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. With awkward storylines and skimpy bodysuits, two recipes for disasters, embarrassing things are bound to happen. From wardrobe malfunctions to Mae Young birthing a hand. Here are some of the most embarrassing moments from female superstars in WWE. Trish Stratus makes out with Vince McMahon. Over the years, Vince McMahon has faced criticism for leveraging his authority to pair himself with attractive women on screen, a pattern not limited to Trish Stratus. Candice Michelle, Tori Wilson, and Stacey Keebler have all been portrayed as enamored with McMahon, akin to James Bond's allure. One particularly controversial instance was Trish Stratus's role as McMahon's on-screen mistress. In late 2000, McMahon scripted a kayfabe divorce from his wife, Linda, who was then depicted as institutionalized and wheelchair-bound. Stratus is introduced into the storyline, with McMahon parading her in front of Linda, culminating in a shocking scene where they shared a kiss on SmackDown directly in front of Linda. Oh no, my God! While such narratives were not uncommon during the Attitude Era, it remains a stain on Stratus' WWF WWE tenure, a moment she likely wishes to erase from memory. The blatant display of intimacy with her employer in the presence of his wife continues to draw criticism and backlash. Shortly before WrestleMania X7, Trish found herself coerced into a humiliating scenario. She was compelled to strip down to her underwear and mimic a dog's bark in front of Vince McMahon. <laughs> This segment was part of a storyline where McMahon was depicted as growing weary of his mistress. The WWF received a barrage of complaints from viewers who found the skit distasteful. The incident has since gained infamy, with opponents of Linda McMahon's U.S. Senate candidacy even utilizing footage from the segment against her. While Vince McMahon defended the segment, asserting its fictional nature, it nonetheless sparked widespread dismay. Undoubtedly, Trish Stratus does not reflect on the incident with any sense of fondness. It was an undeniably degrading experience. The silver lining emerged at WrestleMania, where Stratus retaliated by slapping McMahon, severing her ties with him. From there, she forged her path as a respected professional wrestler. Nevertheless, this single segment from an episode of Raw continues to haunt Stratus, persistently resurrecting painful memories and inquiries. Don Marie and Al Wilson's Naked Wedding In the annals of sports entertainment, few events have stirred as much controversy and cringe as the infamous in-ring wedding of Dawn Marie and Al Wilson on WWE's SmackDown. This spectacle, which promised a risque twist with the bride's vow to wed in the nude, turned into an embarrassing display that left fans and participants alike in a state of disbelief. The bizarre union, which was more a sideshow than romantic tale, showcased the lengths to which WWE would go to shock its audience. To understand the context of this peculiar event, we must first look at the land landscape of WWE at the time. The company was still riding the waves of the Attitude Era, a period marked by edgy content and shock value. Ratings wars with rival promotions had pushed WWE to create increasingly sensational storylines, and in-ring weddings had become a staple of the strategy. From the union of Macho Man Randy Savage and Miss Elizabeth to the chaotic ceremony of Stephanie McMahon and Test, WWE had a history of turning nuptials into must-see TV. Enter Dawn Marie, an ECW alum known for her provocative persona, who had made her way to WWE and quickly became embroiled in a feud with Tori Wilson, one of the company's top female talents. The rivalry took a personal turn when Dawn Marie set her sights on Al Wilson, Tori's real-life father, who had virtually no acting experience and even less of a reason to be on WWE television. Yet the man found himself in the spotlight, his everyman demeanor clashing with the glitz and glamour of the WWE universe. The storyline took a turn for the surreal when Dawn Marie began a romantic relationship with Al. Much to the horror of Tori and the WWE audience, week after week, viewers were subjected to awkward segments featuring the couple's cringe-inducing public displays of affection. The relationship, which seemed to defy all logic, was a far cry from the typical on-screen romance, and it was clear that WWE was aiming for shock value over storytelling coherence. As the wedding date approached, the angle took an even more bizarre twist. Dawn Marie announced that she would be getting married in the nude. The
The promise of a naked wedding was unheard of, even by WWE's outlandish standards, and it set the stage for an event that would be talked about for years to come. As the segment began, the audience was on the edge of their seats, wondering just how far WWE would push the envelope. Would Dawn Marie truly walk down the aisle without a stitch of clothing? How would Al Wilson, a man with no place in the wrestling world, handle the pressure of such a public spectacle? And what would be the fallout for all involved, especially Tori, who had to watch her father be part of this outlandish storyline? Dawn Marie, the bride-to-be, was no stranger to controversy, but the promise of a nude wedding had taken things to a whole new level. The fans, who had come to expect the unexpected from WWE, were unsure whether this was a bluff or a boundary-pushing reality. As the music hit and Dawn Marie made her entrance, it became clear that this was not going to be a typical wedding procession. Clad in a robe that left everything to the imagination, she sauntered down the aisle with a confidence that belied the absurdity of the situation. Al Wilson, the unsuspecting groom, stood in the ring, his expression a mix of nervousness and naivety. The crowd's reaction was a mix of cheers and jeers, with chants of keep it on echoing through the arena. It was clear that the audience, while intrigued by the drama, was collectively feeling secondhand embarrassment for the man who had unwittingly become a central figure in this bizarre storyline. As the ceremony commenced, the officiant began the proceedings with the usual platitudes, but the atmosphere was anything but usual. The tension escalated when the moment of truth arrived and Dawn Marie prepared to reveal her wedding attire, or lack thereof. It was at this pivotal moment that they held themselves. I don't want the whole world to see the biggest reason. But that did not stop these two from frolicking on the ring. Oh, he's a little tense. Lousy Wowsy's on the mat. Eva Marie Braslip. Natalie Marie Coyle, better known by her ring name Eva Marie, burst onto the WWE scene with flame red hair and a determination to match. Her early career was marked by a rapid ascent as she took on the role of manager for the Bella Twins, two of whom also have had embarrassing nip slips. But that is a story for the next section. The California native's transition from reality star to in-ring competitor was met with both anticipation and scrutiny. Yet Eva Marie silenced critics with a series of victories against opponents like Billy Kay, Carmella, and Liv Morgan. As Eva Marie's star continued to rise within the WWE universe, a pattern of peculiar cancellations began to emerge. The summer season saw Eva employing a series of unusual excuses to bow out of scheduled fights, leaving fans and commentators puzzled. These ranged from traffic delays to wardrobe malfunctions, each more curious than the last. The WWE audience began to speculate about the legitimacy of these incidents, with some questioning whether they were part of a larger storyline or genuine mishaps. The tension reached a boiling point when a highly anticipated match was set between Eva Marie and Becky Lynch. The arena lights shone brightly on the ring as Eva made her entrance, draped in a silky white dressing gown, a stark contrast to the vibrant red of her wrestling attire. The audience's excitement was palpable, with cheers and jeers mingling in the air. But just as the referee was about to signal the start of the match, chaos ensued. Eva Marie, poised and ready, suddenly dropped her bra. Her top gave way, leading to the infamous nip slip that would overshadow the night's events. The referee, quick to respond, rushed to provide a towel. She then proceeds to step out of the ring to a cacophony of boos and gasps echoing throughout the arena. Becky Lynch, left standing in the ring, was visibly furious, her opportunity to compete slipping away amidst the commotion. The referee approached WWE officials, relaying the message that Eva could not compete, effectively canceling the match. Eva Marie cannot compete, and therefore this match will not take place. The announcement only fueled the audience's disappointment and Lynch's frustration as she declared her readiness to fight, regardless of the circumstances. Nikki Bella Nipslip. I wouldn't be surprised if you were the reason why Dad left us. The Raw Celebrity Guest Host era was a spectacle of its own, a time when the WWE Universe collided with the glitz of Hollywood. But not all that glitters is gold, and for the Bella Twins, this era was a minefield of cringe-inducing moments. Week after week, Nikki and Brie Bella stood side by side with a parade of celebrities, many of whom knew little about the world of wrestling they were stepping into. This often led to segments that were more awkward than entertaining, leaving fans and superstars alike in a state of secondhand embarrassment. Take, for instance, the time WWE 
WWE decided to play The Price is Right. The Bella Twins, champions in their own right, were relegated to the role of models, showcasing prizes with forced smiles. The segment, meant to be a playful nod to the game show, instead felt out of place, stripping the twins of their superstar aura and presenting them as mere props in a game. But nothing could prepare the audience, or the Bella Twins themselves, for the Jerry Springer intervention. In what was meant to be a dramatic family confrontation, the segment quickly devolved into a spectacle that was more circus than serious. With their brother in the ring and phone-in videos from their parents playing for all to see, the twins' personal lives were laid bare in the most public way possible. The argument escalated, and as tempers flared, Jerry Springer found himself in the eye of the storm. The intervention ended in a tangle of limbs and a fallen Springer, a moment that was as ridiculous as it was unforgettable. These segments meant to entertain instead left a mark as some of the most cringeworthy moments in WWE history, with the Bella Twins at the center of it all. It was a testament to the unpredictability of live television and the challenges that come with blending the world of wrestling with the unpredictability of celebrity culture. Embarrassment isn't reserved for poorly scripted segments alone. Sometimes, it's the wardrobe that betrays you at the worst possible moment. Nikki Bella, known for her confidence and poise, found herself in such predicaments, not once but twice in incidents that would leave anyone mortified. In a seemingly innocent video, Nikki Bella gave fans a tour of SmackDown general manager Daniel Bryan's home. The visit was casual, with Nikki dressed in a plunging black dress, ready to showcase Bryan's charming abode. But as she bent down to pet the family dogs, her attire proved to be a bit too revealing, resulting in an unexpected flash that caught the attention of eagle-eyed viewers. Fans were quick to point out the slip-up, with reactions ranging from surprise to amusement. The incident, while accidental, spread like wildfire across social media, becoming a hot topic among the WWE community. But perhaps the most notorious wardrobe malfunction came during a live broadcast of WWE Raw. In the heat of battle, as Nikki was forcefully ejected from the ring by her opponents, the cameras inadvertently captured a moment that would go viral. Nikki's top, unable to withstand the action, gave way, leading to a nip slip that was broadcast to millions of viewers worldwide. The incident went unnoticed during the live show, but once the footage hit the internet, it became an embarrassing moment that would follow Nikki Bella for years to come. The clip amassed over 2 million views with fans and media outlets discussing the slip in hushed tones and online forums. Karma breaks down and cries. You remember Karma? She captivated audiences with her ominous aura punctuated by a chilling laugh that reverberated through arenas whenever her video package aired. Karma stood apart from the typical divas. She was a formidable force, having dominated in Japan before making waves in TNA, laying the foundation for the knockouts division. Standing tall at 5'11 inches and weighing 273 pounds, Karma could effortlessly overpower the smaller WWE divas as if they were mere ants. Karma's presence in WWE was a stark contrast to the typical diva of the time, who were often marketed more for their glamour than their grappling. Yet here was Karma, a powerhouse who defied the conventional image and brought legitimacy to the division that demanded respect. Her mere appearance would send ripples of fear through the roster, as she stood as an equal among giants, a testament to her skill and presence. The year 2010 marked a pivotal moment in Karma's career as she signed with World Wrestling Entertainment WWE, the pinnacle of professional wrestling. The WWE universe buzzed with anticipation as vignettes teased her arrival, promising a disruption to the status quo of the Divas division. When Karma finally made her debut, she did so with an earth-shattering impact, laying waste to Divas with her signature move, the Implant Buster, and leaving a trail of destruction in her wake. Her debut at Extreme Rules 2011, where she attacked Michelle McCool, sent shockwaves through the WWE Universe. Fans were electrified, anticipating her domination in the ring and a future WWE Divas Championship reign. However, on the May 23, 2011 edition, of Raw, Karma stunned everyone by breaking down in tears inside the ring. In a moment that defied expectations, the woman hailed as the fearsome queen of the divas was suddenly vulnerable, her tears witnessed by thousands in attendance and millions worldwide. A week later, Karma revealed she was pregnant and had to depart from WWE. While her departure was for legitimate reasons, it was disheartening to witness someone who arrived with such grandeur exit on a subdued note. The Fat Jokes 
Mickey James' rise to stardom was meteoric. By 2006, Mickey had clinched her first WWE Women's Championship, solidifying her status as a formidable force within the women's division. However, as her star ascended, so did the scrutiny of her physique. In an industry where the spotlight often harshly judges, Mickey's body became the subject of whispers and eventually loud mockery. It was a cruel twist in her narrative, a stark contrast to her in-ring prowess and achievements. The stage was set for a storyline that would challenge Mickey's resilience and shine a light on the ugly side of professional wrestling's glitz and glamour. As the calendar turned to 2009, a new chapter in Mickey James's career unfolded, one that would test her resolve like never before. Enter Lay Cool, the villainous duo of Michelle McCool and Layla, who would become the architects of ridicule in a storyline that was as controversial as it was cringeworthy. The angle? Fat shaming. The target? Mickey James. The attacks were relentless. Lay Cool dubbed Mickey Piggy James, a moniker designed to humiliate and belittle. The WWE Universe watched, some with discomfort, others with disbelief, as week after week, Mickey was subjected to verbal barrages and degrading skits. The nadir of this saga came when Lay Cool presented Mickey with a grotesquely altered image of her body, her face superimposed onto the figure of a pig. The message was clear, the intent malicious, and the impact profound. The WWE's portrayal of this storyline walked a fine line between storyline development and outright insensitivity. While some fans rallied behind Mickey, voicing their support and decrying the fat-shaming tactics, others were swept up in the narrative, echoing the taunts and jeers. Mickey James, ever the professional, soldiered on, her performances in the ring undiminished by the storyline's cruelty. You have to give her props for that. May Young births a hand. Mae Young's journey in the world of professional wrestling is one of remarkable endurance and pioneering spirit. Born Johnny Mae Young on March 12, 1923 in Sand Springs, Oklahoma, she was a natural athlete from a young age. Mae's foray into wrestling began in high school, where she was part of the boys' wrestling team, a rarity and a testament to her tenacity in an era when women were seldom seen in such roles. Her professional wrestling career commenced in the 1940s, a time when women's wrestling was considered a novelty act. Mae Young, however, was no mere sideshow. She quickly established herself as a formidable competitor, known for her toughness and ability to hold her own against both female and male wrestlers. Her style was a blend of technical prowess and sheer brawn, a combination that endeared her to fans and earned the respect of her peers. As the decades rolled on, Mae Young continued to wrestle, becoming an icon in the process. She was part of the golden age of women's wrestling in the 1950s and 60s, alongside names like Mildred Burke and the fabulous Moolah, with whom she formed a lifelong friendship and professional partnership. May's career spanned various wrestling promotions, from the National Wrestling Alliance to the American Wrestling Association, and she became known for her willingness to take on all challengers, regardless of size or gender. By the 1990s, May Young had already solidified her legacy, but she was far from finished. The World Wrestling Federation, now known as World Wrestling Entertainment, brought May and Moolah into the fold, where they became fixtures on television, often involved in comedic segments that played off their age and experience. It was during during this time, specifically in the year 2000, that Mae Young would be involved in one of the most surreal storylines in professional wrestling history. The storyline began innocuously enough, with Mae Young, then in her late 70s, involved in a romantic angle with Mark Henry, known as Sexual Chocolate, a wrestler known for his immense size and strength. The age difference and the odd pairing were played for laughs, but the WWF writers had a twist in store that would take the storyline into the realm of the absurd. As the storyline progressed, Mae Young announced that she was pregnant, a revelation that was met with disbelief by both the characters within the storyline and the audience watching at home. The idea of a woman of Mae's age becoming pregnant was preposterous, and it was clear that the WWF was aiming for shock value. The angle continued to escalate, with Mae Young's character displaying exaggerated symptoms of pregnancy, leading up to the climactic moment that would become infamous in wrestling lore. Mae Young, amid much theatrics, gave birth birth to a rubber hand. The segment was met with a mix of confusion, laughter, and outright disbelief from the live audience and those watching at home. Aaliyah defeats Natalia. In the electrifying world of WWE, where every second counts, a new record-shattering moment has thundered into the history books. On a night that will be etched in the annals of sports entertainment, Aaliyah, a rising star with the heart of a lioness, faced off against the seasoned veteran Natalya. What unfolded in the squared circle was nothing short of a miracle, a blink-and-you-miss-it spectacle. In a jaw-dropping 3.17 seconds, Aaliyah toppled Natalya, seizing the fastest-ever victory in WWE's storied chronicles. This is the tale of that 
historic night, a story of underdog triumph, lightning-fast reflexes, and a victory that sent shockwaves through the WWE Universe. On the fateful night of January 14, 2022, Elias stepped into the ring with Natalya, a seasoned veteran and member of the legendary Hart Wrestling family. Natalya, known for her technical mastery and experience, was expected to be a formidable challenge for the newcomer. However, what transpired that evening was a testament to Aaliyah's growth and her readiness to seize the moment. As the bell rang, the crowd's anticipation turned into astonishment. Aaliyah caught Natalya off guard with a quick roll-up, pinning her shoulders to the mat. The referee's hand slapped the canvas three times, and in a mere 3.17 seconds, history was made. Aaliyah's victory was not just a win against a respected opponent, it was a statement to the entire WWE universe that she was a force to be reckoned with. This historic win catapulted Aaliyah into the spotlight, earning her a place in the WWE record books and the respect of fans and peers. It was a moment that transcended the match itself, symbolizing the culmination of years of perseverance, training, and unwavering belief in her dream to become a WWE superstar. Aaliyah's lightning-fast victory over Natalya is a reminder that in the world of WWE, anything can happen. It's a narrative of how an underdog can defy expectations and how a split second can change the course of history. As we delve deeper into the story of that record-setting night, we'll explore the match, the aftermath, and the impact of Aaliyah's triumph on the future of women's wrestling in WWE. The immediate reaction was a blend of disbelief and celebration. Aaliyah's face lit up with the realization of what she had just achieved, her hands covering her mouth in astonishment. Natalya, on the other hand, sat on the mat, her expression one of frustration and bewilderment, trying to comprehend how the match had slipped through her fingers so quickly. Commentators scrambled to put words to the unprecedented event, their voices a mix of excitement and surprise. Social media lit up like wildfire, with fans and fellow WWE superstars alike sharing their reactions to the historic moment. Memes, congratulatory messages, and discussions about the significance of Aaliyah's victory flooded the internet. That brings us to the end of this video. For more interesting videos like this, click on the cards on your screen.